Hey guys, and welcome to week number five of Xur and Warlocks. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to be happy. Xur's location this week is over in Terror North by the Speaker. He's way off in the corner. Not really hiding, but you'll probably see him being mobbed by a whole bunch of people, like he is right now. So, let's see what he's got for sale. <laughs> Let me close out a tab first so my computer doesn't explode. All right. So telemetries, we got auto rifle, pulse rifle, machine gun. These level up your weapons a little bit faster if you have them equipped the last 30 minutes. Then you got your plasma drive and your emerald coil. Plasma drive permanently upgrades a rare sparrow, rare sparrow to improve overall speed and durability. And the emerald coil does the same thing except it gives you like a green smoky trail behind the back of it. And as usual, heavy ammo synthesis for one strange coin will get you five synthesis. So let's go to the gear. Titan Helm, Helm of Inmost Light. This is a pretty solid helm and is basically the Striker Titan Exotic. Two extra talents by default on your helm, Death from Above and Headstrong. That is very, very good. Increased melee attack speed is solid, but reduced melee cooldown when you pick up an orb. And the bonus is kind of lacking, definitely not the best. I definitely see this getting way more use as a PvP helm than a PvE helm. There are much better PvE exotics, namely chest armor that you should be using over Helm of Inmost Light. However, if you're a Striker Titan PvPer, this is a very, very solid pickup, especially if you like using Death from Above. If you're not much of a PvPer, you can probably stay away from this helm. But if you are a PvPer, definitely consider picking it up. Hunters get access to Lucky Raspberry. This chest armor is alright. Uh, the intellect is a bit on the low side of the stat roll. The bonuses are good. More heavy ammo, more fusion rifle, and arc bolt grenade chains farther and you'll spawn with more grenade energy. Or, or not more grenade energy, with grenade energy. However, the reason I'm going to give this one a pass is because the Hunter Exotic Helms are much better than this. Mask of the Third Man makes your Arc Blade cost less energy. Knucklehead Radar gives you radar while aiming with a primary weapon. And Acolophage Symbiote gives you an extra Golden Gun shot. Lucky Raspberry versus Mask of the Third Man. Tough call, especially because I don't know how good Arc Bolt's grenade is in PvP because I haven't played Hunter. But I heard it's not the best. And all of my friends who are hunters who I inspected were actually all gunslingers using Acolophage Symbiote. If you're looking for your first exotic, it's an okay overall chest. But if you have any helm and you really like your helm, I would say pass. Even if it's your first exotic, I'm, I'm saying pass. The only reason I'd say pick this up is if you use Arc Bolt Grenade a lot. Like, a lot. But even then, it's... Meh. Eh, hold off. Moving to the Warlock. It's not Sunbreakers. It's not Sunbreakers, everybody. It's Void Fang Vestments. Now, I will say that Strength probably isn't the best stat in the world, but Void Walkers probably get some of the most, or get some of the highest value out of Strength because of Energy Drain. Enhanced Axion Bolt gives you another Seeker on that grenade, and Axion Bolt is very, very good in PvP, and it replenishes your grenade cooldown every time you respawn, which can also be used with Sunsinger's Gift of the Sun to give you two grenades every time you respawn. Pretty good. These robes are niche, though, because of the Hand Cannon Ammo Bonus. I know Hand Cannons aren't the most popular weapon right now. Then you have more Special Ammo, which is a solid overall bonus. Everyone can appreciate that. As someone who uses hand cannons a lot, I definitely plan on picking up these robes. And the only exotic that really rivals these in terms of Voidwalker specific bonuses are Skull, is Skull of Dire Ahimkara, which gives you... I actually have it. Uh, uh, uh. There we go. Uh, gives you reduced damage while using your Nova Bomb, and your Siphon abilities are also improved. That's Energy Drain. Uh, energy drain? Energy drain. Um, and the other two bonuses are increased grenade throw distance, which is eh, and you gain more super energy when killing with a grenade, which is better. 
If you're PvPing Warlock without Skull of Dire Ahamkara and you use hand cannons, I'd say pick this up. And maybe if you even don't use hand cannons, because Axiom Bolt is very strong. However, if you have the Skull and you like it, you can probably stick with Skull if you're pressed for cash. Let's open this back up. Go back onto the vestments. I'm not sure how much Axion Bolt is really used in PvE. I feel like most people use Vortex. And Strength is not a strong raid PvE stat. It's much more of a solo thing. It's much more for... Yeah, it's, it's basically solo. It's not really the best for group play or high-level group PvE play. I think Heart of the Praxic Fire is a better exotic for raiding if you roll with Sunsinger. But I will say that I think these robes are part of the best looking pieces of armor in the game, if that helps. If it helps. I don't know if it helps. Uh, that being said, boink, I'm buying them. Icebreaker is the weapon of the week. At a cheap 17 coins, before I even get into it, I'm going to buy this sucker because well, I want it. Uh, I guess I can just go into my inventory now. So here we go. Cheap 17 coins. Very, very cheap. The bonuses on it are pretty good. Ammo regenerates over time. Missing a shot. Has a chance to return ammo directly to the magazine. And your victims spontaneously combust, dealing damage to others nearby. Sort of like any other, uh, you know, precision damage causes enemies to explode kind of bonus. However, the choice upgrades, so like the columns where you can pick something, bonuses aren't amazing aren't super amazing this is definitely a community favorite weapon though because of its looks and i definitely have to agree this thing looks absolutely awesome it is a solar damage sniper however there are two other exotics that i can think of off the top of my head in the special slot that have solar damage that's invective the shotgun and pocket infinity the fusion rifle this is a very situational weapon, which is why I will say this is not an absolute must-buy. It is by no means a bad weapon in any regards. It's a very good sniper for your solar damage needs. But do you absolutely positively need to buy it? No. It's totally an optional buy. Totally an optional buy. If you have the extra coinage like I do, then sure, grab it, pick it up. But if you're saving something for, you know something that you'll think you'll want to use more often, something like a primary weapon, I'd say hold on to your money. And finally, the engram for this week is a helm, yet again, for the cost of 23 modes of light. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. Hope that helps you guys out for your Zer buying for the week. I'm going to go to bed, because it's probably something like 4 in the morning. Happy shopping! And I'll see you next time.